Welcome to day 17 where we start looking at forms using templates and we finally display some error messages. Welcome back. It's time to have a deep dive into forms. Now Angular supports, well, at least two ways of dealing with forms. One is called template driven, which is what we're going to be looking at today, where most of the work is done in markup. And the second version is called uh, the reactive approach, which most of the work is done in code. But either way, the concepts are very similar and both have very similar capabilities and neither is the most blessed or endorsed way of doing things. So let's start today with working on template stuff. Now, when we last left our app, we did not have any uh, login capability here. We have this logout link, but no way to logging, of logging in. Today, we, we need an excuse for a form, and that login link seems like a good excuse for a form for me. So let's first of all generate a component that we can actually uh, do some of our markup and interaction with. So let's do an ng generate component, and we're just going to generate a login component. So let's create our login component, and let's have a look. Now, we would love to link that up with our router and all that sort of good stuff. So let's work our way through all the steps that we need to do that. Let me make this a bit bigger for you. Uh, plus, good. Uh, first of all, let's add it to our list of uh, declarations in our module. So we're going to our app module and we want to now add in our login component. Uh, and we'll, of course, want to actually add it up here as well. So we'll grab a maybe a above our menu component makes more sense. So let's lay it up there. Our login component, which we said will be automatically created in login. So we've got a login component. We've added it to our module. We have some directives and stuff that we've incorporated here. We'll now want to actually put this uh, somewhere in our route. So let's go into our app routing TS. And again, maybe I could just pinch this import and whack it in our router. and then add a link here that we're going to handle. Maybe we'll have a login. Perhaps we want to handle login and log out down the track, but let's just handle login for now. That's going to go to our login component. So we now have a route that's going to go all the way through to our login component. The last thing we'll need to do is just provide a link for it in our menu, right? So we'll need somewhere in here where we have a router link uh, that actually points to it. So I'm just going to add that to our what is presently called logout, maybe change that to login, and we'll make this link to go to slash login, and we should be good to go. If all of that works, we'll have a router that will take our login call and it takes us to our login works page. Okay, so we've got a login works page. What we need now is actually some markup. So I'm going to just copy and paste some semantic UI markup for a basic form. Uh, no magic here, just copy and paste off the website. And I'm going to whack it in our HTML and replace that login with something that has a real form vibe to it. That will make us feel like we actually do have... Oh yeah, it's looking great. The styling looks a bit dodgy. I might just put some form styling there. Maybe like a, I don't know, like a margin of 2M maybe. And then I'll refresh you. Okay, so we've got our nice looking form with our username and password and our little remember me box. But at the moment, we don't bind to anything. Now, back in the day, we talked a little bit about using ng model two way binding for doing things like uh, remember the bananas go in the box, uh, ng model, and we would two way bind to some backing objects field. And that's definitely one way that you can do for for uh, small forms, uh, but there's some actual cuteness that you can use just by using Angular's built-in uh, forms module. So I don't know if you noticed, but way back when we bootstrapped our application, we saw in our app module uh, when this booted, there's actually it actually pulls in a forms module, which is part of Angular forms. And that gives us a whole bunch of useful formy type things to do. And I'm gonna show you one of those right now. The first one I wanna show you is you can now, uh, when you have a form, any kind of HTML form that Angular sparks, it will attach to it an ng form object. Now that ng form object gives you a backing model for these fields. Now this isn't your backing model like your domain model that you might use for tweets or whatnot. This is actually just a forms based backing model that it will do dirty checking on and validity checking on and all that kind of goodness that's like a forms UI level concern. And you can grab access to that by just giving it a name. So I'm gonna call it a local variable form you can call it what you like. Uh, the backing object that it gives you is called ng form. So I'm going to bind to that. Now, what it's looking for is any elements of your form that are marked as being part of the form model. So if you use this 
uh, form of the um, directive, then then suddenly this field becomes active in your back your form backing model. And in fact, you can see that by just doing a little hack with uh, taking uh, our our form and its value value and piping it through a JSON pipe, which just outputs as JSON. Now we've marked these two as being part of the backing model, and you'll see that they're now here as part of the backing model for the form. And if I was to type anything in here, they actually change. So we have a backing model now for this particular form. In fact, you notice we don't have one for remember me. That's because we didn't add this directive down here. So let's do that as well, because I want to add this part of our model as well. OK, so now we have all three of these. And we can actually gain access to these on submit. Now remember, there's nothing yet in our backing code. There's nothing here. This is just a form level concern that Angular is keeping that model uh, for us as part of that module that looks after forms. If we want to grab it, we can actually have a look at it in onSubmit. We can take our you know, JSON form here, and uh, we can just console.log it. Uh, and now we just need a way of hooking that up to our component, and there is actually a submit uh, event that you can catch. And we're going to take that to submit, and we're going to pass it our form dot value. So what we have now is we have a backing class that's going to take our submission, so a username and password, and then we are going to remember me, and now I'll get that as true, and I can submit that. In the back end, you see, I've now got all of those objects. So I could do any kind of binding I wanted to in my backing code here. If I wanted to shovel that into a various domain object or whatever I wanted to do, then that's that's all well and good. There's one other aspect, though, of the markup engine here, of the features that you were given here that I really wanted to demonstrate, and that was uh, really around uh, things you can do with validation. So because this is a Angular concern, this form model, it's also keeping track of a few states of these form elements. And we can take that, we can use those to our advantage. What we need though is we need a way of grabbing a hold of that ng model element ourselves. So let's just assign that again, another local local variable that we're going to call username, and we'll assign that to the ng model because we know that Angular is giving it, uh, that to us for free. So then we can do things like div um, and actually start using ng if directives and things like that. And we can say, uh, for instance, we call this username. So username dot um, what we say invalid, perhaps. Um, and so if it's invalid, then we can maybe do uh, an error message. So let's do that. Let's make it UI error message, which is one of those built in some uh, semantic UI classes. And then we'll put in uh, username is required, HP and slash div. And so then we have here we go. An an ng if directive, if this username that we've bound here is invalid as Angular has determined it, then we're going to output this div. So I think what we said is that this is a required element. So we'll get that as soon as the form refreshes username is required, which is not really what we want. We only really want it once the form is dirty, once they've actually done something here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add that as a constraint because that's something it gives you as well. Username dot dirty. Uh, and username.invalid. They're the two things that I kind of want here. So in that case, when the form sparks the very first time, there's really nothing invalid. When you start typing, again, nothing invalid. But when it empties out, we can say this is a required field. So that's a bit of an idea of the sorts of things that you can do with just this model-based markup, this template approach to forms. Uh, we can replace a lot of this ng model and validation stuff in code in the back end, and we'll be doing that uh, in tomorrow's episode. There's one last thing I was just going to show you. You can also structure the JSON that this guy produces into clumps of things. If you have, for instance, a bunch of address fields, like say, for instance, remember me was going to be one of a number of fields that ended up in here, then you can add an ng model group uh, equals uh, maybe options, say. And you'll see that when that now submits, you'll get a more structured markup such that uh, when this value is provided, like remember me, it's now inside an options. And so for instance, if you have a cluster of controls, you can make them nicely structured here and then dereference it later in a way that makes sense to you. You can also do uh, dirty and validity checking on whole groups of things. So if you structure a whole bunch of required fields inside options, you can then go, you know, is options dot 
valid or options dot invalid. So that's pretty much an overview of all the interesting types uh, of things that you can do with template driven forms. Tomorrow, as I said, we'll, we'll look at the reactive approach and I'll let you compare and contrast those and see what works best for your particular scenario. But thanks for hanging out.